All right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so um, continue on with this layout. And I'm, uh, I've been thinking, like, uh, would it be uh, in some way a violation of YouTube toss if I were to uh, have Jordan Peterson in the background? Uh, because I know that with uh, with like uh, music, I cannot have music in the background while I'm uh, recording a video because uh, that would be kind of like violation of copyright uh, on that piece of music. Uh, so I can't have music, but um, it's kind of unclear to me what uh, whether lectures are um, treated in the same way. So I guess that if if this is something that YouTube has a problem with, then uh, YouTube is more than welcome to contact me and to tell me about it. Uh, but I'm just trying to be effective here. I want to. Um, I don't want to like spend time just listening to a lecture. I want to lay out this board while I'm listening to a lecture, and I want to also record a video while I'm listening to a lecture. So I think I'm gonna have some Jordan Peterson in the background, and uh, if I need to explain anything in the video, then I'll just. Um, either pause that video or explain uh, while the lecture is in the background. Uh, so let's see how this works. I'm, I'm just kind of like, um, uh, I have a playlist that, that uh, where each video is followed by the next video. should do isn't the same as what is. As far as I can tell, people debate that, but I, I think the reason that that has to be the case is because, think about it this way, you're standing in front of a field, and you can see the field, but the field doesn't okay. tell you how to walk through it. There's an infinite Bypass number capacitors. of ways you could walk through it, and so you can't viable guide to how you should act from it's the array next of power facts point. that are they don't have directionality, and, but you, you need to know, you need to know Next how not point. to suffer, and you need to know what your aim is. So you I mean, I think this is, this is really good. This is like, uh, this is provoking uh, in terms of like, it's, it's, it's thought provoking. It's, uh, it's kind of, it kind of makes you think. Already. We extracted it in part from observation. And we've extracted it in part by the nature of our embodiment that's been shaped over hundreds of millions of years. But we, we see the infinite plane of facts and we impose a moral interpretation. It's kind of funny. The moment I mentioned Jordan Peterson, uh, like, first there were, there were a couple of people that joined and then they left. <laughs> I don't know whether that was because, uh, because this layout thing is, is quite boring at the moment because I'm not rooting, or whether it was because of Jordan Peterson. You know, some people don't like Jordan Peterson and, uh, because he's, uh, he's very... Put it. He is, um, he's very straightforward. So, like, he says what he thinks, and uh, and there is no option, like, because there is no option for somebody to kind of try to keep him quiet because uh, he says what he thinks, and uh, people who have problem with that get frustrated, so they just leave, uh, and they just don't listen to him, or they say that he's uh, stupid or something, which is just like total bullshit. Um, I think uh, anybody way uh, because every person that uh, shares some knowledge uh, is sharing knowledge from their own experience and especially when uh, when it's somebody like Jordan Peterson so uh, you get sort of uh, a little bit of uh, view into their experience and their experience can be different from yours like you can't you can't say that they're wrong because their experience uh, of reality is different than yours like it's 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 the truth in their sense so I think it's useful in that sense I think it's interesting to listen to uh, something like Jordan Peterson. Complex subjects because uh, it kind of makes me think, and I try to kind of see how does that apply into my experience. And we need tools to work in the world. We need tools to regulate, to put an end to suffering to the degree that we can, and to live with ourselves properly. Let's see. I have to move this crystal. And you need the tools to do that. But I don't want. I don't want to move this crystal actually because uh, I want it to be as close to the pins as possible. So maybe uh, I should be putting those bypass capacitors on the back of the board instead. Maybe that would be better. Maybe I just flip them. I just put them here.
solution for the Barthes class. I want it all laid out in this causally, case. so that A and A follow, or okay. B follows A and B. This one. Understandable. It doesn't require a leap. I'm gonna put this one. Unnecessary leap of faith. Save space. Because you know, that's another thing that I think interferes with our relationship with a collection of books like the Bible is that you're called upon to believe things that no one can believe. And that's no good, because that's a form of lie, as far as I can tell. And then, well, then you have to scrap the whole thing, because in principle, the whole thing is about truth. And if you have to start your pursuit of truth by swallowing a bunch of it's lies... It's interesting that Jordan Peterson mentioned Bible so much. So uh, because you, you think, like, like uh, a logical person like Jordan Peterson uh, wouldn't be uh, sort of would be kind of agnostic or like atheist. Uh, but I think uh, so it's interesting because uh, he, he's looking at that like a source of ideas uh, and just uh, sort of uh, to see wh which one which ones of those ideas that are found in the Bible or what, whatever, like whatever uh, text you can possibly find, which one of those ideas applies to you. It's You don't have to believe in anything to, uh, to think that way. Let's see. But that isn't this how we one experience is, reality. What is it? This is the we recap. Have our domain of um, experience, okay. you know, and it's this is a hard thing to get a grip on, even Let's though it's the back. most obvious thing. For the phenomenologists, everything that you experience is real, and so they're interested in the structure of your subjective experience. Like you say, well, you have subjective experience, and you have subjective experience, and so do you. And there's commonalities across all of those. Like for example. You're, you're likely to experience the same set of emotions. You know, we've been able to identify canonical emotions and canonical motivations. And without that, we couldn't even communicate because you wouldn't know what the other person was like. You'd have to explain infinitely. There's nothing you could take for granted, but you can. You know, and phenomenology is the fact that in the center of my vision, my hands are very clear, and then out in the periphery, they get they disappear. And phenomenology is the way things smell and the way things taste and the fact that they matter. So I think that everything is subjective because the only thing, uh, like the only um, way for us to express ideas uh, is uh, through concepts that we have picked up through our experience. So uh, anything we experience with our kids, like uh, everything we learn, like how do we learn meaning of things? Well, we have to experience them and then we put words to the, to the experiences. So essentially, everything is subjective, or ends up being subjective. Demolish all the positive parts of it, but try to think your way out of the negative parts, man. Good so then, whatever is right ends work. up being whatever works. So, phenomenology is and the Bible stories, and I think this is true. And things like, like for example, my car is broken right now because an idiot mechanic has has put in uh, like a copy of a of a generator, and uh, what he also did was that. He actually put the wrong copy. So, like you can you can buy a cheaper generator uh, than the original part, and that's fine. But then, if you buy the wrong copy, you ruin the engine. So that's what he did, and he was trying to save money uh, to kind of like make make a buck on uh, on selling a copy uh, instead of the real thing. Uh, but he ended up ruining the engine, uh, which. He probably wouldn't have done if he bought the right copy, but that's what he didn't do. Uh, so uh, now it's kind of like a insurance company uh, thing where the insurance company has to pay for his mistake, uh, and uh, that kind of like that doesn't work. That doesn't work to make like you. It may have worked this this time, or maybe it worked before, but it didn't work this time because ultimately he ruined my engine, uh, and so I'm not I'm never going to go to that guy again because he ruined my engine. So that doesn't work like a strategy uh, for for long term. So whatever works uh, doesn't have to mean something uh, that's not. Uh, like Whatever works doesn't have to mean that you have to buy uh, a copy of a generator and put it in somebody's car, uh, because that's that's not uh, the definition of whatever works. Had he put in the real generator, then uh, he would have gotten paid for the job, and uh, I would have gone to him again 
if I had a trouble. Uh, but he lost that ultimately, so his strategy did not work. Nothing more self evident than that. Of Let's put this one somewhere. Right at the level Let's of find the next power pin. Uh, I think there is like four power pins on each side. So. Is there a power pin here? Yeah. Rotate it. And place it on the back. So that, and then to know that the, the biblical stories have a phenomenological truth is really worth knowing because. You know, the poor fundamentalists, they're trying to cling to their moral structure. And, you know, I understand why. It's because it does organize their societies and it organizes their psyche. So they've got something to cling to. But, you know, they don't have a very sophisticated idea of, of the complexity of what constitutes truth. And they try to gerrymander the biblical stories into the domain of scientific theory. You know, creating, pro promoting creationism, for example, has an alternative scientific theory. It's like, this just that just isn't going to go anywhere, you know? Because the people who wrote these damn stories weren't scientists to begin with. There weren't any scientists back then. There's hardly any scientists now. I think that's an interesting idea that Jordan Peterson is talking about, uh, that uh, people use religion to kind of organize their ideas. So re religion kind of helps people to organize their ideas. It's like the, maybe the first, the first little step like if you're so completely disorganized then reading a story uh, that makes you think kind of makes you feel like you're organizing your ideas so that's uh, that's an interesting take on why um, people fi people can find religion valuable like, it helps explain something that you ultimately cannot explain of conscious individuals yeah like the structure of I totally agree. experience of conscious individuals then that opens up the possibility of a whole different realm of understanding it's it just an experience that somebody had like it doesn't have to be true it's just an experience and, and or rather it's like a subjective stories. subjective um, explanation of that experience that kind of makes sense to me Okay, let's see. Uh, what else can we put here? Uh, we have uh, we have this lead. Uh, this will okay, ultimately well, so, be so that, that ultimately be somewhere close. Maybe. maybe. I place the lead outside for now. Something like that. It's like it's not possible. But here. Because depending on where the CPU is so going to be, the lead of the PCB close to it. world's way more complicated than a text and so there's an infinite number of ways that you can look at the world and so how do we know that any one way is better than any other way and that's a good question let's say this now the postmodern answer was we can't and that's not a good answer because you drown in chaos under those circumstances right you can't make sense of anything and that's not good because it's not neutral to not make sense of things very anxiety I just save uh, the, the schematic and the PCB into Git uh, because uh, if in case KiCad messes up my schematic or my PCB, I want to have the latest uh, version saved in Git. Like you burn yourself out, you age right. rapidly because you're surrounded by nothing you can control. Very that's an existential crisis, right? It's anxiety provoking and depressing, very hard on people. All right. And even more than that, it turns out that the way that so, we're constructed. Um, Emotion, unless we have an aim, and we can see ourselves. Oh, that's precisely like unless you have an aim, that makes us happy. It, it really is like the, the journey that makes you happy. Like, that's that's the main reason why so many, uh, like so called gurus, uh, tell you to have goals. That's okay, but but it does show that the attainment, like, if you, if you have something to look forward to, even if it's Friday, then like. You're looking forward towards Friday so you can have your um, weekend. So that's your aim during the week. Obviously, you can have much more complex goals, but you know.
It's the whole idea of having something to look forward to that seems to make people happy. Like, what is happiness? Happiness is... Right. So I think he took a variation of that quote. Uh, so the, there is a quote about happiness. What is happiness? Well, it's the it's the worthy realization. No, it's a it's a step by step realization of a worthy ideal or something like that. There is a quote that uh, goes something like that. And I think that makes sense. It serves your specific short-term needs. I mean, that's a great question. Why not do that? Why act morally? If you can get away with something and it brings you closer to something you want, well, why not do it? Yeah, Maybe like like trying to put a fucking copy generator into well, my car. It seems to me tied in with what I just and he thought he was going to get away with that. But the car only went 94 kilometers and then it no broke way down, way. like you total meltdown. Shallow, fucking idiot. Trivial yeah, it's... Like, you know what happens when, when you put the wrong generator into a car? Uh, the belt on the generator is no longer aligned. So the belt gets chewed up into small pieces. And, uh, and the belt goes into the, like, into this other belt that, uh, that runs the, uh, the valves uh, on the engine. Uh, and uh, when bits and pieces of this first belt get stuck into the second belt, uh, the, the, the valves ultimately uh, misalign and then they hit the cylinders and then you lose your compression and your engine is completely broken. Okay, something in that... Um, I have this voltage sensing... Um, it's kind of a low-pass filter uh, and a resistor. So it's a resistor divider to bring the voltage down. And then there is a capacitor uh, to do a little bit of filtering. Let's see how big this capacitor is. Okay, this is, this is quite a large capacitor. Uh, so this produces um, uh, kind of like a, a choppy uh, wave signal. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, to have this capacitor closer to, uh, to the, ultimately to the ADC. Uh, but we have um, a few op-amps that uh, also amplify the signal. So the best thing would be probably to place uh, both the op-amps and, uh, and this resistor and this capacitor uh, as close to the STM32 as possible. But I think I have to... Um, I think I have to kind of place uh, all the blocks uh, together first before I decide where I'm going to put those uh, op amps. So let's see if I can uh, maybe untangle something else here. That's a nice way of looking and, uh, at it. This podcast. He says, um, someone, Marge says, you like, know, you ultimately, people that. respond says, best uh, to any kind of proposals <laughs> that they can directly <laughs> see benefits them. <laughs> so, saying that you do something good so that you benefit your future self, that's kind of like a good way to put it. Okay, but you see, we have to grapple with that. And so, the you that's out there in the future is sort of like another person. And so, figuring out how to conduct yourself properly in relationship to your future self isn't much different than figuring out how to conduct yourself in relationship to other people. But then we can expand the constraints. Not only does the interpretation that you extract have to protect you from suffering and give you an aim, but it has to do it in a way that's iterable, so it works across time, and then it has to work in the presence of other people so that you can cooperate with them and compete with 
I wonder if um, if I'm going to be actually placing this uh, closer to the to the processor as well. Uh, that would depend where where I'm going to be placing this connector. Somewhere close to the uh, to the motor connector. Uh, and I think I don't think I have enough space um, to place both the connector and uh, when I have the uh, this uh, H-bridge driver there. Um, I could have it maybe there. Let's have a think about this. So we have three inputs and we have the encoder. We have uh, this input um, farther from let's place this one. This one can go here. So that's part of the reason that the postmodernists are uh, wrong. It's also part of the reason, by the way, that AI see. people who've been trying to make intelligent machines have had to put them in a body. Because it turns out that you just can't make something intelligent in some sense without it being embodied. And it's partly for the reasons that I just mm. described. Is you need constraints on the system. I have to place this connector as close as possible um, so because I want to fit into the, into the into the 10 centimeter constraint. Like so I want the, the length of, um, of this side of the PCB to be... So preferably I have to kind of like squash everything into this 10 centimeters. And that may not be as easy. Let's see. I hope to end this 12 lecture series knowing more than I did when I started. That's my goal. things out and, and 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 this is part of the this is part of the process by which I'm doing that and so I'm doing my best to think on my feet you know I'm, I mean, I come prepared but I'm, I'm trying to stay on the edge of my capacity to generate knowledge and to make this continually clearer and to get to the bottom of things and so I'm hoping that that's what I'm that's what I want to accomplish and it seems like people are interested in that so then we're going to try to accomplish that together Will this even so work? That's the plan, and the idea yeah, is to see if this, this could work at the bottom of this amazing civilization. So uh, I can actually move this one a bit closer, and then I have more space at the top on the other side. Of reasons. And maybe if we understand it a little bit, so we have to violate the courtyard there, but that doesn't matter because uh, we're only concerned about whether the connectors will fit. And uh, because they have plugs, they will um, like even even the uh, the plug that's going to plug into the connector will fit uh, if they're precisely close together. But I don't want to place them too close because there could be uh, certain like manufacturing differences, um, and I don't want to have to hammer them in. Uh, so I usually try to leave a little bit of space there. Exactly ten. Three hundred to six hundred million years ago, and yeah. we were so now we have uh, ten centimeters mammals, across here. Years ago, That's perfect. We we were down on the plains between sixty million and seven million years ago, and the modern human beings seem yeah. to emerge about one hundred and fifty thousand years ago. And civilization, pretty much after the last Do ice age, something after yeah. fifteen thousand years yeah. ago. Not very why, long why can I not all, move you know? uh, this connector? That's, that's that it's not the, the zero the point. Which I want to understand. So I want the to reason understand. it jumps there is because that is the Why zero point. Why we are the way we are looking at life in its, in its continual complexity right from the beginning of life Come itself. On. There's some real Maybe I can move it like this. Let's we see. share attributes with other Arrow animals. Keys. Even no? apple, apple, animals. Move. As simple as Arrow crustaceans, keys. for example, have nervous okay. system properties that are very much like ours. And it's very much worth If I use arrow keys, I don't that. see so uh, how it aligns with the, with the edge there. Yeah. Remarkable way to think because it, it doesn't matter that much though because they can stick out a little bit uh, outside of the PCB. Of 
but it would be nice if all connectors are kind of uh, within the, uh, the edge cuts of the PCB. Okay. So what I can do now uh, is basically just place uh, also these connectors. Uh, let's see, what is this? This is, uh, oh, this is the half. Okay. Let's see. Let's place the how connector right next way. to the encoder connector. Collection of sub personalities. Do you feel like you have multiple personalities? Low resolution representations of you. It only wants rage, or it only wants something to eat, or it only wants it only wants water, it only wants sex. It's 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 you, but shrunk and focused in a specific. It's direction. you that only wants sex. And th those all those motivational okay. systems are very very ancient, very archaic, I think we can very that very one. powerful, and they play a determining role in the manner in which we manifest ourselves. And as Freud pointed okay. out with the id, we have to figure out how to take all those underlying animalistic motivations and emotions and civilize them in some way so that we can all live in the same general oh, wow. territory without tearing each other to shreds, which is maybe the default position of both chimpanzee and yeah. humanity. So, so I take that seriously. If society is left to itself, it's going to tear itself to shreds. That, that, uh, that, 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 I think that, that makes sense. I think that's pretty much what is likely to happen. That's why society comes up with uh, ways to stabilize the society. Like you have to have rules. You can't have a society without rules. And the rules are there just to keep the society from disintegrating. They sort of meant the same thing. They meant that there are these great forces that move us, that we don't create, that we're that we're that we're subordinate to in some sense. Not not entirely, but we can be okay. subordinate to them, and they move our destiny. And um, the Greek view, there's something. And I'm going to have to move the, the components a little bit as well. So we have a little bit of space there for the, for the signal wires. And we only need they're going to be no on inner layers. Like that. No, they have to have the memory that produced the, uh, the behavioral pattern to begin with. It has to be brought okay. back to mind, and then it has to be analyzed and assessed, and then they have and to think about a different way of one. acting. And it's extraordinarily complex. So, psychoanalytic, literary, well... Let's move this one here. There's this new, there's this postmodern idea. Unfortunately, I have to scrap my idea of, no uh, of having everything in neat, nice blocks because uh, trying to make everything fit uh, into a certain size uh, requires me to make the blocks overlap anyway. Okay. Maybe. Uh, okay, where did I put this? So I can go somewhere in between. This. It's like it only fits there. This one can. This one can fit here. And I have to move this one uh, closer to the other. Um, above it because uh, I have to free up a little bit of space for the wiring. I'm going to leave it there for now. And uh, then we have all of these, uh, so they fit nicely here. Look at this. This is the 
one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So, what is the coolest thing that Jordan Peterson has seen? Every single one of those lines is a biblical verse. I don't know. I have to now, switch the window. Of the line is proportionate to how many times that verse is referred to in some way by some other verse. Oh, look at this. This is pretty cool, actually. So you really? say, well, this is the first hyperlinked book, right? I'm, I'm just it's click. the first it's hyperlinked the book. Come on. Move out of the way. The end can't God damn it. The beginning. That's, that's the rule of yeah. time. There you go. What happens now can't affect what happened to you Let's 10 see. years ago, even though it actually can, but whatever. Well, you reinterpret <laughs> things, right? And then they're not the same. But whatever. We'll yeah. You reinterpret things. They're not, speaking, then they're not the same. The present cannot affect the past, but if you were looking at a piece of literature, that's not right. Because uh, when you I write think the present end, you can affect, like, when you write the, the way you think about the past can, can affect so the past. So, if you think about it that way, then present can actually affect the past. It's so many paths. Maybe that's why it's so, so hard to leave religion because there's so many paths that you just get lost or something. I don't know. It's interesting to listen what what Jordan Peterson thinks about certain things. It's kind of thought provoking, I think. How many it's like emails, a playlist. Documents and text messages have you already sent today? Grammarly helps you write easy to understand, error-free messages that people oh, will want on. to read. It's simple. I don't want to listen to that. So I was trying to figure out in part well, where to uh, So now I want to um, I can actually take care of this. Um, you can think about it as a revelation. These resistors, you know, I think. Because it's like it springs um, out of the void that's new. Or actually, no. It's a revelation. What I'm gonna do is it just, uh, it just place this chip. Uh, See, so I have my uh, I have my encoder interface, and I have uh, a few. Uh, can we go to this chip directly? So these are 40 volt signals. Uh, they support plus minus 40 volts. Uh, so I want to place uh, ultimately this chip somewhere here. And I can also place all of the capacitors and resistors there. I think these these ones actually belong to the HAL sensor. Let's see. So no, they don't. Artists observe one another. They observe people and they represent what they see and they transmit the message of what they see to us and they teach us to see and we don't necessarily know is... what it is that we're learning from them. We're acting like we're learning something. We go. To ourselves in fiction constantly that's yeah. an artistic I have to place those capacitors many, uh, close to the connector the the they're world. kind of the bypass it's the creative artistic mm. people to that be the, the easiest to forward. place them close to the connector they do that with their artistic productions first they're on the edge and the dancers do that and the poets that's do true. that and the visual artists do that and the musicians do that and we're not sure what they're doing like we're not sure what musicians are doing what the hell are they doing why do you like music you know, it gives you a deep intimation of the significance of things. And then no one questions it. You go to a concert, you're thrilled. And it would be best if this uh, power rail and then comes out uh, right before the capacitor. And then from the capacitor, that would be the correct way to, uh, to wire those. I think music is representing the current reality. Like a lot of songs are rooted in, in whatever is happening in the world when the song was written. Let's see. Oh, this feels, yeah, right. 
this is this is the termination uh, and also no i guess this is like a filter uh, this is just to slow down the slopes i think the question still remains where does the information in dreams come from and i think what it where it comes from is that let's see what would be the best way to do this the patterns that everyone acts out we watch that forever and we've got some representations of those patterns that's part of our cultural history that's what's embedded in stories in fictional accounts of I'm just going to select the evil, uh, the bad guy, the good guy, and the romance, just the signal the, lines. I'm just going to see where they go. So that one there, that one there, that one. And they deeply affect us because they represent okay. what it is that we will act out in the world. And then we flesh that out with the individual information we have about ourselves and other people. And so it's like there's a, there's a, there's waves yeah. of, of behavioral patterns that manifest themselves. It's basically in the all crowd, around the chip. Across time. It doesn't really, really matter how this chip is rotated. It's going to be the same kind of challenge anyway. That is, and they write it down and they tell us, and then we're a little clearer about what we're up to. You let's know, see. like a great dramatist like Shakespeare, let's say, we know that what he wrote is fiction, and then we say, well, fiction is In terms of noise? True. But then you think, well, hmm. wait a minute. Maybe it's true like numbers are true. This could be you a know, problem. Numbers are an abstraction from the underlying reality. But because this no is a differential right signal, would really think numbers ideally. are true. Ideally. Like rejecting real, common mode noise. Once you have mathematics, you're just deadly. Because we're going to have a lot of switching noise here. So, so we have to uh, make sure that, that uh, these signals than the, than the uh, maybe go like. Um, you take I could root them on on an inner that. layer, uh, and then it's I could have ground on either side. That would isolate. This is like the most noisy part of the circuit. This is going. So, um, and you, and you, and you, and abstracts that out, so the human experience Not a big as issue. such, right? So okay. it's an abstraction from this Let's substrate, and, and people are affected by it because they see that the thing that's represented is part of the pattern of their being. That's the right way to think about it. And then with these old stories, these ancient stories, it seems to me like that process has been occurring for thousands of years. It's like watched ourselves and we extracted out some stories we did that in drama and then we distilled the drama and we got a representation of the distillation and then we did it again and at the end of that process it took god only knows how long and then we did it again and, and we ended up with thousands of books they, they've traced fairy tales back ten thousand years some fairy tales in relatively unchanged form and it certainly seems to me that the archaeological evidence for example okay. suggests that Really old stories that, that uh, yeah, the Bible begins with and, are uh, at least that old and likely embedded in that. This you might one think, goes. well, that in part is that cultures that don't change, like the ancient cultures, they the same. That's they didn't the have answer. generation moving generation to generation. That's how they stay the same. And so we know, again, in the archaeological record, there are... Of course, I agree. Even without the internet, our culture has changed a lot. ...to 20,000 years. It was discovered in caves in Japan that were set up... ...with also characteristics of Western Europe. So these things... Did he just say bear worship? I totally missed that. We're I don't know. watching each other act in the world. And then the question is, well, how long have we... Been the, the diet will go well, maybe. And that's a long time, you know. That's some hundreds of millions of years, perhaps longer than that. We've been watching I each think other those things are unconnected. What we're up to across that entire span of time. Some of that knowledge is so built can place right the, the diet close. Why we can dance with each other, so, for example, yeah. right? Yeah, they're pretty much unconnected. Uh, so these ones are connected. Uh, so these pins will need to be let out. So I need to leave some space for the uh, for the bias. Although I so want this diet to be to take up a little so bit less of the space in vertical direction, out so what is it that I think it's better to place it there. That's even 
Like this should probably go question. first. If you're going to live in the world and you're going to do it properly, what does properly mean and how is it that you might go about that? Yeah. Well, it's the right question, right? It's what everyone There's wants as to many know. answers as there are people in the world. What, what is the world made of? It's not the same question. How do you live in the world? It's the eternal question of human okay. beings. And I guess we're the only species that has ever really asked that question. There. Because all the other animals, they just go and do whatever they do. Not us. It's the only thing here. Uh, amount of space around the board of uh, all the space with the edges of the board uh, so that would mean probably that I need to move this uh, maybe here and that's where the dream gets its ends up being Okay. Form, Let's look at the other one. The scroll bars, because zooming yeah. just totally messes everything up. What uh, I think there is something wrong with my scroll wheel and my mouse. The other issue is, is that if Nietzsche uh, was correct and if Dostoevsky or Jung was correct and Dostoevsky as well, without the cornerstone, the philosopher is correct. Like if you if you apply some philosophy and you get good results, uh, that kind of makes the philosopher correct for you but it's it's kind of up to every single person i think my mouse is irrational Oh, this is, this is going. Okay. Okay. Um, and this one goes directly here. Let's see. Yeah. A bit of a challenge, maybe to to root this properly, but I'll see. I think I think still this is the best way to place the connectors. It's kind of the most compact. That must have been a long time ago. All sorts of things like predatory cats, and they will eat you. But there's utility in going out there to find. And you don't kill the snake; you kill the damn nest of snakes, and that makes you pretty popular, just as you should. <laughs> Your uh, reproductive potential, let's say, and we're descended from people who did that. So yeah. we have this notion about how the world is structured that's deeply embedded in our psyche, like really, really deeply. Way, way down, way down, way down in the limbic system, in these ancient parts of the brain that are like Come 60 on. million years old or 100 million years old. Out. Older, I want to scroll out. I want to scroll out. There we go. I want to zoom out. And so the first thing we do with the unknown world, and we act that out analogous to the manner that's pre presented. God does at the beginning of time to extract habitable order out of chaos. And, and I, 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 I won't tell you about the other part of that now. So you act it out first. And then the second thing is you watch people who act it out and you start to make representations of that, that stories, right? And maybe you admire them. And then after a long time, you collect.
select a bunch of those stories, and then you can say what that is. You can articulate it as a pattern. And then you have a fairy tale. So this is something Nietzsche also figured out to begin with, you know, because prior to Nietzsche, I would say, he did so many things first. It's quite remarkable. You know, there was an idea that you first think and then you act. And then people like to think that, but of course you don't. It's bloody rubbish because you're in the impulsive and you can possibly imagine. You're always doing things before you think. Sometimes yeah. you Like that. That, yeah, it's like, uh, it's actually true for me as well, because uh, I'm acting and, and then I'm thinking. Yeah. So I'm trying to place this uh, capacitor underneath that connector. Uh, this is not going to be very good. Uh, Maybe I should place it here. I can go. Right, so if I place it there, it's going to be right between the connectors. It kind of fits there. But its designator is not going to fit there. Yeah. I guess we have no choice. I think we have to place it. And that brings me to where you can is easily it? map that onto an evolutionary yeah. body there. comes first, right? And, and then the imagination, there. which is the body in abstraction, and only then the word. Because we can imagine yeah. at least that's the theory. And so I represented it. This is a uh, Okay. Maybe like that. Maybe this will work. Because now that the connectors are, they actually uh, they actually have opposite pinouts, which is a bit annoying. I wonder if uh, this actually means I would. It would be better maybe to create. A separate connector, uh, depending on which one of these we have. I think uh, I'll have to think about that. I'm trying to remember whether whether I have been afraid of the dark when I was little. Something that I really don't like is ants. Like if if it, if it's like ants in the dark. Okay, so if like if you if if you're walking in the uh, in the forest, like when I go out with my dog. Uh, and, and there, there is like a attack, huge ant stack, and you don't see it, and you actually step into it. That's not the nicest thing in the world. Where is this thing? So this goes. What? I don't know, but to me that sounds like Elon Musk's uh, flamethrower. Oh, there it was. Uh, yeah. okay. So this goes there.
they look like a big bowling ball, you know? They're really, they look really fat, and, it's, and they're short, and they're wide, and that's because they have intestinal tracts that are like, you know, 300 miles long. And the reason for that is because go out in the forest and, like, sit there and eat leaves. They have, they have no calories in them. So... This, this zooming is actually age. absolutely killing and me. Because yeah. what they eat has no nutritional value. In order to extract anything at all out of it, human beings at some so point... So this, uh, this will be somewhere uh, to the microprocessor, I think. Let's see, I have the microprocessor here. So, well, that's the basic archetype of... For that is, um, I try to I try to keep the uh, the higher voltage unfiltered signals um, as uh, as long wires, and I try to keep the anything that is either filtered or uh, with a lower voltage. Uh, I try to keep as short as possible. So in this case, it's better to place uh, these resistors and capacitors closer to the. Uh, then you can have uh, the higher voltage um, high volts. Uh, signals uh, then going to the connector the so they'll be less affected by the noise more pronounced if you have filtering story we have, and that's so then you have unfiltered signal coming from the connector and the, the filter would be uh, MCU pin. So where this goes. You, uh, so this, this has to go. Remember you know, really both of them actually. So the problem here is that I also. Right. It is that so uh, that connects. React to with your body. That's better. In the existential terror and the extraordinary curiosity are gripping you, and then it's like the unknown unknown. I'm gonna move this one there. Yeah, I think the reason that that phrase caught on so well is because he nailed an archetype. There's unknown unknowns and there's known unknowns. And that's the unknown unknown. And you have to be able to react to an unknown unknown because they can get you. And you can't just Okay, so we have the voltage dead. sensing there. Like and human we beings have are the sort of creature who has to know what to do when they don't know the what current to do. sensing. And that's very paradoxical. Here. And what we do is we prepare to do everything. Very, very stressful. And, but also this Analog signals, they have Maybe to be as short as possible. Uh, take extra care to make sure that they are short as possible. Um, okay. Okay. You're not the absolute unknown because I know something about you, but you're the unknown as it's manifesting itself to me right now. Okay, so the, right. the problem here is that um, a, because I have, um, have it, the different the pins that, that actually the the processor, in uh, in I probably shouldn't be using this uh, diode, and instead yes, I should be using that are well, just one diode in one package. package. Uh, or I should uh, actually rewire this pin so that it ends up there. I I think I was pretty um, pretty like, and I think that all of my ADC pins are actually uh, wired such that there is no other option to move them around besides the ADC three. So I have ADC three has a several. Pins Um, but that's something that's going to be, that's going to take a bit of time. Uh, so I'm probably not going to be doing this uh, as part of this video. Uh, I want to video though. I've, I've got several components here that, uh, that are still part of this mess. So I have to like... One of the things I should tell you about how I think Let's is see. that when I think something, I spend a long time trying to figure out if it's wrong, you know, because I like to hack at it from every part of the idea, because if it's a weak idea, then I Jordan Peterson is a brain hacker. And I've had a real hard time trying to 
trying to figure out what's wrong with that idea. I, it, it, it seems okay. to me that it's uh, pretty damn here. solid. And then, you know, if you watch what people do in movies, and stuff, I'm going to place this both the hero and the actor. Generally speaking, the bad guy is someone who strives for, for, for authority and, and position, but fails. Okay. G generally speaking, not always, but fails. So he's a good, bad example. A kid, you take a kid to a, a good guy, bad guy screen, okay. the kid okay. picks out pretty fast that he's not supposed to be the bad guy, and, and figures out very quickly to zero in on the good guy. And that means that there's, there's an affinity between the pattern of good guy that's being played out in the fiction okay. and the perceptual capacity of the child. And, uh, you know, and one of the things I told go. my son when he was a kid, when I used to take him to directly by that connector. Sometimes more frightening than they should yeah. be. So this is uh, on dedicated power supply. What connector. I said was keep your eye on the hero. So the connector right. there. Okay. This one. Gripped by the movie yeah. and often quite afraid. Play, like place this power supply by the connector and, and have with, generally see. speaking and, i mean why do you do that where does that where does that come from you see how deeply rooted that is inside you you bloody well yeah, go line up and good. pay to uh, watch that happen it's not an easy thing to understand and it's it's so self that it's a tremendous mystery and so is it so unreasonable to think that we would have actually over the millennia come to some sort of collective conclusion about what the best of the best guys are, best of the good guys are, and what the worst of the bad guys are. And to me, archetypally speaking, thinking of that as the, the hostile brothers, so that's Christ and Satan or Cain and Abel, for example, very common mythological motif, the hostile brothers, it's like those are, those, those are archetypes. It's like the, the Satan, the worst that a person can be. Independent of, but of course, everything everything is concepts. Like everything is, is just all of those ancient stories. Uh, they're just ways to explain something, like uh, explain a concept that that people have observed, uh, and they just try to explain it in the best way they can. Uh, so they ultimately used uh, like symbols, like God and Satan. But ultimately, it's uh, it's just concepts that they were trying to explain. Um, Like, these days we, we may use, like, the word idiot. What is an abstracted ideal formulated the ideal from any particular incarnation or man or any yeah, ruler? Sure. Yeah, sure, yeah. That's, rule uh, in biblical stories, which is that that's a fascinating idea. When the actual ruler, I mentioned this before, when the actual ruler becomes... Um, Confused yeah, uh, so this diet, by the way, this is uh, this is in order to protect the regulator. Uh, let's say, for example, somebody connects uh, some other um, device here, uh, which is also plugged into USB. Uh, so there will be 3.3 volts here. Uh, and um, if, for example, uh, this board is powered off, then the voltage on this pin, uh, on the output of the regulator, is going to be higher than the input voltage. So uh, the current will flow through the regulator because the regulator already has a diode inside it. Uh, and um, uh, everything that's on the 5 volt rail will be powered by the 3.3 volts from here uh, through this diode, which means this diode is going to burn down uh, or the regulator will burn down eventually. Uh, so it's uh, good to have this diode as kind of a protection for uh, reverse power, the back powering of this regulator. I think that's a lesson that, that we have not thoroughly, consciously yet learned. It's still implicit in the narratives. We still haven't figured out why that's the case. Well, again, I think that's a real hard argument to, to, uh, to dispense with. So, all right. So we looked at this a little bit. Um, the Trinitarian idea is that there's a, there's a, a father I'm trying to kind of uh, make sure that I have, um, actually I should have this diode aligned with the, with the connector, um, so it doesn't stick out too much. Um, I still have that UX there maybe, uh, but uh, just to sort of be able to enclose this into a rectangle, 
if the possible. From, from dreams and hypothesis and artistic visions and all of that over a long time, and maybe they get clarified into something like consciousness. But it right. takes a damn long time to get from close to this um, you know, from two chimpanzees watching each other to a human being saying well we're, we all we all exhibit this faculty called consciousness this doesn't need to be and at the edge of the PCB somewhere in, in the between. middle um, but at the moment the to have this connector uh, so that it's closer to this corner of the of the microprocessor because a lot of the signals uh, actually connect the pins on this corner. What is this? Oh, this is the diet, okay. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We have um, this one. What is this? Oh, it's a bunch of resistors here. Okay. Think about what a child is doing when he plays house or she plays house. I can't click on the on the actual app, so I have to click on the title bar uh, in order to select the window first, and then uh, I can move the component using the M key. That's the way I have to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure as hell. Nobody likes when somebody copies them. That's why they invented copyright. I think, um, like, my thought of, uh, that the European Union is doing, uh, I think that uh, the best way, probably, to um, to modernize copyright is, is to um, to focus only on um, ways where where somebody, for example, uses something that is copyrighted to generate some income. It shouldn't be anything that is uh, taxed. Uh, which I think it isn't, by the way, because there is a lot of information floating around the internet uh, where, um, uh, like, websites uh, try to um, try to turn it in such a way that uh, they try to say that European Union is trying to create a link tax, uh, but that's actually not the case. Uh, that's actually uh, something that is just used to generate traffic. Um, but I think um, I think copyright should adjust more to the to the way that internet works. Like sharing anything on the internet should be uh, totally uncopyrighted because it doesn't cost anything to copy something. And I think that uh, the society needs to adjust to that. Like as long as copying is easy, that's going to be the natural thing for people to do. But I accept that the fact that there is copyright, and I, I respect that, uh, but I, I don't think it's uh, it's probably not the best way forward. Yeah, right. What am I doing here? I'm, at, I'm being a total idiot. I have to go back to, to this resistance. I got a bit carried away. Come on. Zoom in. There we go. Stop. Obviously, we were mostly bodies before we were minds, like, clearly. And my so dog is better at following instructions than Tika right now. Just like the chimpanzee. But Tika is like... Act reasonably, sensibly, if you're a head chimpanzee, or you're going to get yourself ripped. It's uh, a little bit slow. You see that rule? You know, the real problem, I think, is that my... There's a lot of that.
And so we acted yeah. like wolf troops. And the ones that didn't do that, they the natural thing to do. And uh, there's no thought behind that. It's just the way it is. So, uh, and I think I'm probably going to have to move them, move them around a little bit. Um, but um, since I'm cleaning up uh, all of the components that were out of place by KiCad, uh, I think it's it's a good um, intermediate step to move them. Single column, so. Um, I just want to get as many components um, away from this mess as possible. Have all of the components uh, separated. Can um, uh, and then I can arrange the blocks and uh, continue with the more detailed layout. Kind of just like other stages. Let's see. And this one will go. will go there as well. Click at some random part, uh, which is part of this mess, and I'll see where that belongs. And uh, that will be the next thing that I this part belongs to the voltage sensing circuits and uh, I'm going to be doing the voltage sensing circuits a bit later. I should tell you we'll about the genesis of this see. theory, I suppose, is the right way of putting it. Um, yeah, this is all part of the voltage sensing. Oh, when I was about your age. This is nice. Okay. That was back in the early 80s or thereabouts. Um, Come on. And this was particularly true around 1984, but it was true mm. before that too. Did I forget? Um, oh, you know, actually, I, actually, real or I placed all the other ones, but not imagined. And the primary worry. Um, let's see. Turn out because my zoom doesn't really war. work very well. I'm gonna, and, you know, I'm gonna try to worry. select uh, um, both of them. At one point, many years later. I went down to Arizona and issued ICBM <laughs> nuclear oh, missile silo. Where is that I, the ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, were well, very large there. rockets. But where is right? the flew it? Yeah. They could fly halfway around the world. I hope I didn't sort of move something. It was deep underground. Usually, like if I have this very, window very selected and I forget to click on the title block here, light green, um, you know, that I may green actually be moving something on this camera. Everyone seemed which to is like in good. the 1950s. It was like okay. pastel green Star Trek console. Yeah, and uh, right. so we went down out in the yard. It was in the desert. Out in the one. yard, there was a very, oh, I would say, magical I'm object, for lack of a better yeah, word. And that was okay. the nose. I, Let's I see. CBM. And then we have quite big. this one. About that big. About that high, pointed like the point of a bullet, about three quarters of, in, of an inch thick one. plastic, you know, a kind of a resin, and it was designed to melt on re So That see. was fairly. I'll just move this to the. And then we went. Interestingly to enough, the EtherCAT uh, circuit here. Uh, let's see how we're going to really place those. Uh, it's here, like a though. museum artifacts from the 1980s featuring Reagan and and Gorbachev <clears throat> meeting multiple times and it was staffed by these let's see southern uh, so I'm going to control click on the on the pins just to see where they come out um, and they were they're just super friendly let's see. and you know they were happy to be in the museum it was like going to visit your your grandma's your so grandma's jarring, nuclear you know, missile silo Place. And 
yet it was conjoined with hospitality. Yeah, well, could be good. Actually. Surreal in that manner. Anyway, we went here. into the and uh, they ran us through a simulated launch. So imagine a panel like this, made out of metal, except twice as long, with another one of these things at the other end, 16 feet across. Where does this so. go? Basically, 1950s technology, <clears throat> but updated. And then imagine that what you had to do to launch it was that there was a guy with a key, and there was another guy with a key. And if I remember correctly, the keys were around their necks, although I don't think they were stored around. To launch the missile, you had to put the key in the lock. Yeah, just go like this. Both of you. That was the safety precaution. It had to be two of you. Put the key in the lock and hold it for 10 seconds, and then away the missile goes and it wasn't as big the missile wasn't as big as the rockets that went to the moon but it was plenty big you know the, the silo itself would have easily been as wide as this room is and perhaps larger and many many stories tall it was so this goes there. so they ran us through a simulated launch which was right so th this is this is the center tap on surreal, the on the ethernet uh, transformer and, and they told us that Someone asked, and they said the keys were in once. And this is now, directly now connected to the, um, you know, to the three to three. During the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, so this capacitor so doesn't really. That close. Or yeah, this and capacitor filters again, sort of the times, the power supply. This is basically like a bypass capacitor to this center. Another track. peak of conflict in 1984 when there was a movie showed at that time called. Uh, the day after, there, which at that time garnered more views than any movie ever had on, on TV. And it was a story about the aftermath of a nuclear war and the people who were left. And it was pretty realistic and, and pretty frightening. And it I'm going to leave it there for now. As I found out later that that influenced Ronald Reagan to put pressure on or negotiate with the Soviets, depending on how you look at it. And so, well, and then, you know, five years later, the Soviet Union collapsed. No one saw that coming. Um, 1989, in some sense, you know, like a huge machine like that doesn't fall apart all at once. It falls apart. This is fine for now. Uh, this is going more properly when I start routing this. For good reason. You know that. So somebody commented on my video, here, or like somebody commented in this live feed, but then deleted their comment. Why did you delete your comment? Write your comment again. So I didn't see that comment. The system that still exists in Korea as a remnant of the Cold War and systems in Southeast Asia and in Africa. These two are pull-up resistors for the IPC. So Marxist presupposition. Um, um, they should be uh, by the IPC case. Posited a, a utopian so we got the SCL there. Uh, this will go like this. And, everyone had uh, and I'm going to move them out a little bit because I need to um, make sure I have enough space to, to route any pins that are uh, close by those pins. And you can imagine so I don't want to put the, uh, the components too close to each other. Because of course, other systems, all other systems, and uh, the second one income. is uh, It's like there. a natural law. It's actually governed by, you can model it. There's a distribution called the Pareto like this. It doesn't look like a normal distribution. A lot of you guys have been told about not normal distributions and how many things follow a normal distribution, most things. But that's really a limited case. You can understand a Pareto distribution if you you've all played Monopoly, I presume. Yes, so this is I think this is boot one. Everyone uh, has the same amount of for money. The, for keeping the boot well, one pin low. The same amount of wealth. And then what happens uh, as the game progresses and 
really as a function of chance. I mean, yeah, I but because the boot yeah, one pin is not, actually an I/O, so it, it you can, you can be programmed to be a PB two. Uh, and we use a resistor uh, to make sure that we don't so uh, accidentally short this I/O, and it will actually be an error if we connect this directly to ground because this is uh, this is marked as an I/O pin. So it's good to have a resistor there. Relatively consistently, and some people would lose. The money starts to be distributed. The thing about money, and the thing about lots of things, is that zero is involved, and zero is a, a weird place. A trading game, and you hit zero, then you're done. And so, and it, you know. It's really hard to recover. You know when you're doomed in Monopoly. You know, you, you can tell. You've got some resources, but there's going to be some no, this crisis. Is also part, may, maybe all of these tell. components are actually and all part of uh, the you know it. So oh, actually, this one. We have something. This one needs to go you know, there. You might be rescued by Let's flip this one. Luck. And I rotate those I capacitors uh, so that um, so what happens is that as so the, the side that goes to the power pin is as close as possible to the actual and power pin, uh, which is actually wrong there. Uh, and have this more this more capacitor money. will uh, will and be connected over, uh, with a short track and a via here. So I have to actually reserve enough space here so that now I have a place with uh, so I have enough space for a via. In some sense, that's how trading games work. You know, you got you might wonder why is there why there is inequality in a society, and it's easy to consider that it's because of the Society is corrupt, and perhaps you know, societies are somewhat or horribly corrupt. That's the variation. There's no society that's without criminal element, fixed element. Anyways, trading games tend to produce a Pareto distribution so that very many people have very little, and a tiny minority have a tremendous amount. That's the 1% that you hear about, right? And, you know, the thing about that 1% is that that's happened in every society that's ever been studied. It doesn't really matter what the governmental system is, and it certainly, handled, it certainly happened under the Soviets, that's for sure. And there was a lot of people who had enough zero, so they just died. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, so like, the, the utopian dream yeah. was Look, communism worked. Like, everybody for whom it didn't work died, so... It worked for everybody else. It's very hard to fight against <laughs> that distribution pattern yeah. when people are trading because mere statistics will do that. And then there's other things that. And I should tell you as well that the Pareto distribution. Everybody for whom communism didn't work, things. they died. So, so they're not part of the st statistic anymore. If you look at books, <laughs> if I remember properly, last year there was something like a million English language I books. I think that published. would be enough space. More than 100,000 copies is none, right? That's none. Yeah. And of that 500, you can be sure that one of them was Stop. by Stephen Stop. King. Stop. There's like five authors in the uh, on every airport paperback stand occupying the See how good it is to have this uh, this circle around the cursor? Right? Because uh, if, I, if I were and zoomed out like that and I didn't so have this circle, I wouldn't see the cursor at all. I added the circle in another video uh, where I explained. I had to modify the source code for KiCad. Failure breeds failure, and it's not necessarily linear. And that's a really difficult thing to deal with. And it's hard on societies because one of the things we do know is that, you know, as you stretch out the inequality, you make men, particularly on the lower end mm. of the distribution, more and more likely to be aggressive. It's sort of like, you imagine every man has a threshold for violence, um, and status is important to men, not that it's not important to women, but it's a different, it, it's a different kind of status. It, status is important to men because it's one of the things that makes them marketable as partners to women, so it actually turns out to be quite important to men. For status, hierarchy position, and in a really unequal society, if you're like a low yeah. rung guy, then and you don't have any opportunity to rise because any ideology that ignores nature 
uh, is ultimately going to fail. Okay, so now my dog is rolling around the floor generating static electricity again, so she makes those kind of sounds. Like, she gets angry. She gets angry at the floor for zapping her. Where was it? Where is it? All right. Okay. And he was kind of happy with the idea of maybe being the subject of a book. And that one. Okay. We can move both of them then. And so this guy Let's move both of them. Associate with them, got to know them quite well. project in which the gang was and the gang broke up and he got the book because they kept books. And what he found was the average street drug dealer, first of all, was employed in another job as well and was making far less than minimum wage. Now, but the guys, you know, further up the chain, of course, followed the Pareto distribution. And so there was a tiny minority of them who were raking in a tremendous amount of loot. And the guys at the bottom were just waiting around for the possibility that they could rise up the hierarchy. And, you know, it's a pretty violent game. So the chances that someone's going to be taken out it's pretty high, and then the <clears throat> slot opens up for some opportunistic trader, and the perhaps he can move up the hierarchy. Protection. So the Pareto distribution governs all sorts of other things, too. I mentioned and with this, yeah. it governs the popularity of books, the sales of books, but it, it also... Oh, it also got this one. Let's move this one to the LCD. creative production of any sort, artistic production, industrial production, it doesn't matter. Almost everything fails, and a few things succeed beyond anyone's wildest imagination. Apple's a good example of that. How do you even define something that fails? Like, is it something that doesn't work as you want it to work? Extraordinarily dominant is that, is that the definition of fail? Or is it like... Value yeah, a it's, dollars, I think it's also subjective. It's entirely it's subjective that. whether something fails and or that's a lot of money. Works. And I think if I something like this, I probably have the figures wrong, but like the top 40 people, the richest 40 people in the world have as much money as the bottom. Obviously, yeah. this, this board will right fail now, if it doesn't like work the way I intended it to work. Or they have a skyscraper full of cash. That money is out in the economy doing whatever right. money does. Yeah, these two. So, um, you what know, else do we have here that we can actually easily move? Oh, oh yeah, of course. Um, the the brake resistor. This proclivity for inequality okay. is pervasive among this the creative products of human beings. It's the case with the goals scored in hockey. My son told me so as far as I know, uh, since I've simulated this circuit in uh, LP Spice, intended, um, so it should switch um, the brake resistor. Uh, it should actually like short the DMOP power over the brake resistor if the voltage rises above uh, the supply voltage. But it's, it's not even uh, whether this works in reality, so, we'll, we'll see. And the benefits flowed to people it's an interesting thing to evaluate here. Why, I would say, because, let's see. You know, let's say you start writing Where does this go? And you get a book, oh, that's the Q8. And, uh, rare things, and this is the diary. Because it has to, um, it has to be able to take the current uh, for both motors. So it's like, uh, how many amps is this weighted at? I think it's like 100 amps or something. No, it's probably 100 volts. Um, but 63 amps, I think. Increase in your reach and your capacity for production. More and more flows to you. This is. And then on the other hand, if you 
start to right, fail, it'll be 40 amps. You know, why would someone so it's kind of um, because I'm designing this for um, One idea uh, very common in our for uh, 20 amps each. Uh, this diet works, uh, but I I could have a look whether I find some other diet that uh, that I maybe I can use two of them. Uh, to get money. more current throughput. They're just done, first of all. You know, they were hanging around with uh, people who were a little on the sociopathic yeah. side, and so, especially if they weren't that So bright, we're going to have to put some uh, heat sinking around well. this diet. Uh, we're going to have uh, bias going to the more layers, and then uh, more copper you know, underneath. One guy I remember in particular, you know, every time he got his, his disability check, he was gone for five days. Yeah, that dog scared me. <laughs> So basically what she does is that uh, she rolls on the floor and uh, as she does that, uh, her, um, uh, like her hair generates static electricity. Uh, so that caught me by surprise, actually, because um, I tried to pet her and I got a really big zap. Uh, so now I understand why she does those funny sounds, because when she rolls around, uh, the, the discharge uh, kind of gives her small zaps and that upsets her. And so she, and hard manage money. she gives really all the funny sounds. I mean, the elderly people have a hell of a time now because you know, um, trucks are see. contacting them on the internet nonstop. And so, so this would be Q7, uh, yeah, on pin number it's three like, there. It's like pouring water in their hand. Well, it's still it's not that helpful, not necessarily that helpful. And then, of course, contributors to poverty are, well, it's not so good to have a low IQ. You know, people don't like the idea of IQ because seems so arbitrary, you know, to have a high IQ. Well, yeah. it's not like you deserve it exactly. It's just you're set up that way pretty much. Right Recruiters don't like the uh, idea of very, IQ. Very, very stable. I've had a discussion about IQ that with uh, somebody who works as a recruiter. Not educating them up and they, the they, they prefer to use their own tests. Taking someone who um, has a low IQ but to me that sounds that, just like, like using some tests that, that, that are, well, you know, that don't really have the same track record. But then, of course, uh, somebody needs to study IQ for, uh, like, really study the subject to be able to tell if, if that is um, uh, really like the ultimate test to test intelligence. But uh, if we believe uh, what Jordan Peterson says, uh, then uh, it does seem to be a test that, that actually does test intelligence uh, pretty thoroughly. So Jordan Peterson is a practice like Matt in a single domain and hope that it's a rather other domains. That's the only he's kind of a believer in IQ a lot. He believes uh, no. that it determines uh, no success in life. It. People claim it, but the claims never hold up. And people have been trying for a long time to do it, let's and see. they haven't been able to do it. And so um, let's move all of these components. The differences uh, in IQ really make a difference. You know, I mean, you guys. Average IQ is probably 125, 130. 115, you're at the 85th percent. 15 would barely get you going for for a hard university. Where is the power connector? 130, you're it's probably there, graduate right. school material. You know, 145. So you're up maybe there. Um, at the rate it would actually be a good idea to have the brake resistor um, As you get smarter, the close to the power connector. Because we have this diode that uh, has to connect to the main power lines. So it's probably a good idea to just but move this. So this can be a little problematic here. Maybe I should put this on the other side. Um, maybe this should go there, actually. That's pretty much the threshold for reading instructions and being able to follow them. So, you know, and our society is increasingly sophisticated, so... Okay. By so this works. Obvious, uh, and then this one you know, goes... The liberals think, well, this goes there. This society is unfair because okay. there's... So maybe it's better to place this well, one here. Well, there's a job here. for everyone, but none of them think, well, there are massive 
massive, massive, massive differences in people's ability to realize this. And that poses a structural problem. I had a client, and I got him a volunteer job, which is way harder than you think. You need a police check, for example. Like, it's harder to get a volunteer job than a real job. But I, we got him in a volunteer job, and he had to hold pieces of paper, letters, with he worked at a charity, he had to hold pieces of paper in three so that he could put them inside envelopes. And, and then the letters, which were in a pile, had to be matched with the proper envelope, which were also in a pile. But some of them were French and some of them were English, so the French ones had to be matched carefully. But it's... There is no there is no shortcut for the the minimum order, now. I don't I don't think well, there is. I don't know. He had to figure out whether it was the papers uh, that were out of order. Okay, that's going to be problematic on my order. computer because I have to press and the the FM key. Some of the yeah. letters had photographs attached to them, and you weren't supposed to bend the photographs, but they weren't always in the same place, so that meant you had to figure out how to fold the paper in three, a bunch of different ways without creasing the photograph, and then the other thing is. And I re never realized how difficult it is to put a piece of paper in an envelope until I watched someone who couldn't do it. And he probably had an IQ of about 80. You know, if you met him on the street, you wouldn't think anything different yeah, of him. Because... Normal-looking guy had some other problems. All right, uh, right. So both of them I connect to the, to the power line. And then like this goes to Vmod. Uh, so Vmod... Uh, and Vmod has to go know, to the uh, to the motor. Let's see. The VMOD goes uh, to all of the and motor the drivers line up there. Exactly, like really exactly. The yeah. tolerance is probably half a millimeter, something like that. So maybe, maybe uh, this will have to go somewhere insane. here and facing but let's imagine this that way. The first fold, you, you're out by an eighth of an yeah. inch. And the second fold, you're out by an eighth of an inch. So it's a little crooked. And yeah. That means in total, you're out by a quarter of an inch. And then it won't fit in the damn envelope. Then you kind of crumple the envelope when you put it in there, and then it gets stuck in the sorting machine. And so he sweated blood trying to do that job, and he eventually, they eventually planned to fire him. So imagine what that's like, eh? You know? Okay. You can't get a job, and then so you get a job at a charity as a volunteer, Maybe. and a charity decides Maybe to fire you. Maybe if I like this. You know, I mean, really. That's this is better. So I talked to the woman who was running it. What is going on? Why, why, why can I not control click on it? Oh, there we go. Okay. That might be a little on the devastating side. Okay. I mean, she had her reasons. You know, he, he, he was always asking people questions about so how maybe like this. And, you know, so that meant he was interfering with the productivity of other people. And it was genuine interference. I mean, she wasn't being mean. And it was her job to make sure the place did what it was supposed to. So, um, you know, she was then I can have a thick a uh, copper and, he and then uh, the and if I place this uh, with this side to the to the motor drivers, then uh, this should work fine. So that solved that problem, except that um, but then I have this um, brake resistor as well. Has a happy ending, I this think story, as maybe as this know. should be uh, he here, actually. Got a dog. I don't really feel lonesome, at least not these days. I used to feel lonesome before, that was like 10 years ago. But I agree with what he's saying, like, really, having a dog, that's, it's really nice. Like, it's the best way for me to remember to get up and exercise. Because otherwise I'll just sit and, and just work and uh, and I'll just miss the the time. Okay. Now now Alice wants to play. So Alice, nay, nay. He got a job helping sit. a train dog. Sit. Nay. Nay. Hooray. Sit. Sit. It was like a miracle fundamentally. So. Anyways, the reason I'm telling you all this is because Go. there was a reason for the Cold War. And the reason was that there's inequality. And there's different theories about how to address that inequality yeah. and different theories about why it exists. It took about five seconds. Theory about 
why it exists, which would roughly yeah. stop But it's a lot of fun, uh, and uh, I think uh, have the Bel worked. having a Belgian Malinois is something really that. special. It's not like an ordinary dog. It's, um, it's a lot of work, but it's fun to train them. It's so much fun to train them. Uh, I'm training mine uh, in, um, uh, in protection work. So she's been training since uh, 13 weeks old in protection work. And it's loads of fun. Okay. Uh, I think I need to take my dog out now um, because she needs to go out and have a shit. Uh, so it's highly unlikely that, <laughs> that I can sit for much longer because she's going to start barking. And, uh, I mean, it's not nice to the dog. Like, I could tell her to sit and then, then she sits. Uh, but uh, if she needs to go to the toilet, it's not nice for, to the dog to, to not let her do that. So uh, it's sort of more about uh, being a good leader for the dog than, uh, than having the dog do what I want her to do. Because that's no problem for the most part. Sit. Now she's sitting. Now she's quiet. But, but she, she really needs to go out now. So um, I'm going to stop this video, but you're welcome to, uh, to join my live streaming. Um, when I get back and uh, subscribe to my channel so that you get notified when I live stream and uh, also take part in the in the chat and don't delete any comments right thanks for watching bye for now